Hi guys, this is Talia Wolfgram and I am the president and owner of Excellence Cloud Services. We are a consulting and management firm um, in the Washington DC area that specializes in Salesforce, uh, cybersecurity, and risk management. And we absolutely love what we do. We're a minority owned company. We're very philanthropic customer focused and we would love for you guys to maybe think about working with us but today we are going to talk about salesforce and i have not had this big of a crowd um, for quite a while so for anybody on the polycom um feel free to um, pipe in with any questions at any time. Um, I did send everybody an agenda, but let's just get into Salesforce. All right, so Salesforce as a whole is a, is a cloud. I've explained the cloud in the agenda, but it's a customer relationship management system. And so it manages customer records. And so it's um, very similar to other tools of record where you're manager, managing um, you know, individuals who, you know, um, uh, clients, um, patients, um, HR, individuals, um, you know, Salesforce can do everything. So Salesforce has multiple little clouds in it. Um, also, Salesforce is a software as a service. So you may see the term SaaS, and so what that means, and it's not as scary as it sounds, it means it's software as a service. And so it has many clouds under it. So the most common ones um, are the sales and marketing clouds. So for instance, the sales cloud houses the ability to uh, do marketing campaigns, to build a shop, to um, fill out leads. Um, it helps many sales teams. Um, it helps many marketing teams. So if you're in PR marketing, go and use um, use the uh, marketing cloud or the or the sales cloud as it's called. Um, you could do beautiful marketing campaigns, and there's also some um, adjunct. Um, apps that you can add to Salesforce called, um, like one called Pardot. Um, there's actually a really cool thing called the Salesforce App Exchange, which is like um, the Google Play Store of Salesforce, where you could find uh, as many apps as you need to add to Salesforce. If Salesforce is not giving you what you need, which very, very rarely you'll need to go there. But I personally have developed 14 apps on the apps on the App Store, so look for the ones um, trademarked by me. Um, and so, so sales cloud. Um, you can sell things. Um, you know, if you're a salesman, um, if you work in marketing, that's great for you. Service cloud. I also didn't add this here, and also pardon my horrible handwriting. Um, this is not my strong suit. Um, contracts, great. Emails, great. Writing, um, I don't know where I failed um, there. Maybe it was because I was homeschooled. Anywho, um, the service cloud is great for any type of tracking system. So for instance, if you're a help desk, um, if you want to track orders, if you want to track any type of customer complaint, um, any type of tracking, they use a thing called cases there where individuals can put in their data and then that data is sent off to whatever group um, it needs to go to. And so uh, it is very, very valuable for call centers. Um, I've deployed it for, I've done actually over 100 very successful projects. Um, and for, uh, for call centers, it's been very, very helpful. So when that individual calls in and says, hey, my phone's broken, or hey, my package isn't here, or hey, I need somebody to come out and fix my cable box, um, just, 
input a case. That case is streamlined just like that with Salesforce's awesome out-of-the-box automation. It goes to the appropriate individuals. They're emailed. Um, they're notified in many ways that you can customize. And it just does wonders. Alrighty, let's get to some of the other clouds. Um, so one of my favorite, the Health in Life Science Cloud. Alrighty, so um, typically called the Health Cloud. So this is fairly new. Um, this aids doctors, providers, um, and patients. So this pretty much um, replaces the pen and paper or whatever old legacy like NetHealth, EMR, or EHR system that the doctors were previously on. This system does so many wonderful things from um, monitoring your blood pressure from wearable devices. It can track information from a smartwatch. Um, you can track your steps and get analytics from it. Um, also, it's very, very great for customers, um, aka patients, who want to schedule an appointment because they're able to schedule an appointment, fill out those COVID forms, um, you know, telling them that, you know, that they have not been around in it, any other individuals with COVID, um, fill in that information themselves, and that information is fast-tracked to the doctor. They can communicate with the doctor, send a note to a nurse, they can um, put in a prescription refill. You may think, okay, I already kind of use a software like this. How is this one different? This one is different as it is not only aesthetically beautiful, but it provides so much extra communication for overall just care management for everybody. Um, for the actual provider, they have a glimpse, um, for instance, um, let's say I'm a provider right now and I have not prepped myself for the day and I have a patient coming in five minutes. So I pick up um, my laptop or phone computer and I can have um, right here everything I need to know about the client from their past blood pressures, prescription histories, um, their DEA, um, controlled medication history logs, um, they everything. Um, you can see notes, past visits, um, and then, you know, there's a lot of doctors out there, honestly, that just have a lot of patients. And um, honestly, I mean, um, as anybody would, they may forget key facts, but there's a place where you could, you could put key factors. So, you know, if, you know, you're meeting um, this patient and you don't exactly remember some insights about them, but you want to keep up that patient engagement, you can have those there and say, hey, how are you doing? How is, um, you, you know, Landon your son? You know, um, how's Landon's school going? And, you know, um, and how, you know, are you enjoying church? You know, they could ask you, you know, questions and um, that data um, can be sent right there. That per prescription can be sent right by a fingerprint right there. And um, it just does so much. But one of my favorite features there, other than the wearable device, and I'm not gonna get into that because I could go on for hours, but one of the biggest features, guys, is the feature of where of specialty doctors. So for instance, an oncologist. An oncologist is going to need to speak with multiple other care providers because um, and, uh, you know a patient with cancer unfortunately is going to have a PCP. They're going to have a nutritionist. They're going to have an oncologist. They're going to have um, an endocrinologist. They're going to have many different providers. Um, same thing with drug and rehabilitation um, center doctors. They have to deal with the PCP um, and other doctors because um, you know uh, unfortunately sometimes doctor shopping comes into it so on a one-page glance they can look at and see oh um, these are all of the other doctors in the network and at one click they can send a message to one of them or all of them but all of that data is conjoined so there so nothing is missed 
and everybody's connected and their care journey is just expanded so well um, and in terms of the current softwares out there um, I would love to if you wanted to do a consultation with me I would love to show you a side-by-side -side comparison you will be my you will your mind will be blown um, so that's one of my favorites I've done many implementations there and they have been very successful next we're going to talk about the community cloud Alrighty, so let's say um, you're a community. Let's say you have a dance team, a cheer team. Let's say you are a city um, with city officials um, that communicate with each other. And um, you want a forum perspective that is beautiful where individuals can vote on, let's say, um, shall we have our annual Christmas parade with COVID restrictions? Um, for the higher end stakeholders, they're able to communicate with each other, but um, there is so much you can do with the community cloud in terms of the one, the templates, it's very easy to build. Um, there's beautiful aesthetics and also just the engagement within these communities. Build it for a book club. Um, for instance, Hulu has a great one. Um, Life Force has a great one. Shopify. Um, I actually worked on Hulu's. Um, uh, there are so many, um, and if you look at my portfolio, I've worked on many, but um, where you can have FAQs just right there. Community Cloud, great. I could go on, on and on, but I do have a call time, and I do get very excited. Alrighty, so let's go to um, the analytics. Um, so Einstein AI, aka the analytics cloud. So um, AI, artificial intelligence. This is an amazing new tool that Salesforce has that creates beautiful analytics before you even need them. It extracts data from, the, from where you want, it extracts data from wherever you want, it auto-creates presentations. So let's say, say you have a sales team and you have 10 members and those 10 members are out in the field and you want to see a high level just view of how they're doing and insights on trends and um, scores and things like that based on territory. You could matrix as many things together there and also um, there it can create instant presentations on flaws in your current system. It can create instant presentations on what is going well there. Also, one great feature out of the thousand wonderful features there is the chatbot feature. So for instance, um, I keep on mentioning Shopify. Go to Shopify, ideal option, go to Amazon. Um, normally, um, you go to a website, you have a pop-up pop up. You, you have a pop-up come up. You already know that that is a bot and you're not speaking with an individual. And I'm sure you've had that frustration before of where it's like, okay, maybe it's after hours and you want to speak with somebody. Um, I did a great, uh, I did a great project with Run the Runway where we built it as human as possible and we put templates in of the most common questions. So for instance, um, you know, when will my dress be there? Can I get a dress in another size? Can I change the address? You know, the numerous questions. But also from the AI perspective, it thinks for itself and builds upon itself. Some of you um, that are very adverse to AI and kind of scared, um, you know, I know what Stephen Hawking said. Um, <laughs> um, hold your comments for that. But um, I know what Stephen Hawking said about AI. But, um, it builds from, you know, if you come in there with a new question, 
and that question is asked a certain number of times, it automatically adds it into one of the fields and it's as personable as possible. However, some of the examples I've given you, those are projects I have done in the past and I've passed them off to other individuals. So maybe my trademark of them is not still there. Maybe there have been some changes, but think of Amazon. I've worked with Amazons and Amazons is exceptional yes you know it is a chat bot but you have the ability to, to chat with a representative and you have the ability to answer all of the questions that you need in a more human relatable approach rather than repetitive questions you know it sees you it knows you you're not having to add in your name email phone number for the 50th time you know it, it sees you sees where you're at you know and and it's just a great part of it all right so we've got Einstein okay so we've got commerce so commerce so the commerce um, cloud aka e-commerce um, e-commerce obviously is all about sales selling and so um, with Salesforce you can deploy that to do B2B, which means business to business. So you can sell from a business to another business. So for instance, like Amazon. Amazon will have individuals sell items to them to sell for them. Um, similar to eBay, some other places, um, they do B2C, where business to customer, where you can put out your pro put out your product there. Let's say you have a line of fur boots that you want to sell. Um, you can throw them on there and build a beautiful site with force.com, which I will get into, and you could do all of your transactions with an aesthetically pleasing, beautiful site. Um, and there is so much being done with e-commerce and so many changes and I'm excited to see what is done with the new release um, and you will love uh, you will love it if you are in the sales world alrighty so force.com as I spoke of right here force.com um, go to Salesforce if you want to create a custom site Go to force.com, easy as can be. You have templates, you could drag and drop, it's easy as can be. If you want it a little bit more complex, there are, vi there are things called visual force elements, which are um, elements that are very pretty that you can add to the page. Um, however, those require a little bit more of a technical level to handle, but are absolutely great. Alrighty, so we have CPQ as well, which does great analytics and quoting um, j ahead of the game for you in your system. Um, in terms of some of the in-house features outside of the clouds, you can manage the heck out of accounts, management, uh, uh, accounts, um, and account management, sorry about that. I was just on a podcast earlier. Um, accounts, you could manage contacts, you could manage leads, you could manage HR individuals, you could manage anything you want. You could build what you call a custom object and manage how many shoes you have. If you're a sneakerhead, you can um, you could go to there and create an object where you can um, have you know, uh, where you can manage your shoes. You know, um, it just does great data for that and it holds a lot of data. So for instance, um, if you have a contact there and you wanna hold all of their normal data, you can add fields there, but also if you wanna house all of the correspondence from that individual, you could have that as a light item. Um, if you are a marketing professional, and if you want to see um, if that individual has opened up the email that you sent them, if you want to see how long they opened it up for, let's say they looked at it for 30 seconds, you could look at that and build analytics on that. And throughout some of these other features, that stuff is automatically paired in, um, especially with um, the CPQ and the Einstein analytics, where just from here, you can get a report on um, the 
best leads um, if you're sending out an email campaign. Ones that looked at the email the longest, ones that ignored. You know, you can you can define them by good leads, bad leads. You could do scoring, hundreds of things. Already there's chatter. So Slack, Skype for Business, uh, Skype for Business, um, all of those work, workplace communication tools. Chatter is a wonderful tool within Salesforce and has unli not unlimited, but multiple licenses. And so from a licensing perspective, if you're deploying Salesforce for your company, you can deploy Chatter where customers um, or, your, or your employees, clients, um, they can chat with each other and have a instance in Salesforce where they are able to, um, you know, um, be a part of the project. I've been in many implementations where they've said, no, only Bill, Sue, and San need to be in the system. And, you know, there's, uh, you know, um, the, you know, accounts receivable team felt left out. Um, that's a good way to keep them involved and, uh, you know, um, make them happy. They're able to get in there. They, 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 there is limited visibility because there is very, very strict um, security um, guidelines and very awesome things you can do within Salesforce. And in my next video, I'll be talking about my sweet spot. Um, the security um, in Salesforce, but um, they could go in there, they could create tasks, um, they can um, do a number of things, but they could have their own instance and fill included. Alrighty, and so within this, um, in terms of like what you're probably thinking, like, okay, this sounds great, but like, what can Salesforce do for me? Well, one, um, it can help you track your data better. Um, your data is going to be in one place. So, data. This pen isn't working very well. So you could you could have your data in one place, guys, where you can reach it um, by tablet, by phone, at any time, at any place. Make changes, and um, and that is remarkable. Um, you have reporting. where you can um, do high level reports and um, infographic dashboards for everybody. It's a beautiful thing and Salesforce is great for it. Um, for innovation, um, there's so much you can do for innovation within Salesforce. Um, to communicate better, you can use Salesforce for that. Um, Salesforce can manage the heck out of your accounts that you have out of your leads, out of um, any type of marketing structure you have. Um, it, you know, anything from, um, you know, a glass repair company all the way to a high level tax company, um, Salesforce can do amazing work and Salesforce houses amazing automation automations. We have these things called workflows, process builders, where, for instance, um, if you want an email sent out or a field updated, so let's say you have an account, um, you, you know, Sally Sue, um, Sally Sue um, wants to, uh, you know, become a client of yours. And so you change that account um, from, you know, you change the account name, so you, whatever your verbiage is, um, so you could um, change her to a client and then pair her with an account re representative. Um, once you change that field, automatically an email will go to um, Sally Sue, that email will go to the account representative, letting them know her data which will be pulled from her contact record. So they will have all the data they know to call her and say, hey, nice to meet you. Um, you know, you're my new client, let's go from here. Um, and so, um, you know, field updates. Um, they can do automatic field updates. We have approval processes within the system where, um, you, where for instance, I worked with a client um, 
a, a university client, um, an Ivy, um, that, that where they um, had articles that they wanted to publish. However, they were having some issues with um, free speech. Um, I mean, First Amendment, um, but um, free speech, um, and yeah, don't, don't quote me on this, but they were having some issues with just people posting anything out there. And um, so they wanted a process of where, when individuals wanted to post these scholarly articles, that they would be reviewed by two different teams prior to publication. And so the process was great with automation. So once Jim Smith sent in his paper on, um, you know, the thesis of why the world is flat, um, it would be reviewed by um, Team A, where they would be notified. Um, and um, we do queues and everything. So normally, um, we would put those individuals in a queue or other instances where they would be notified. They would review it and say yay or nay. Um, and then um, at the time of submission, um, he gets an email stating it's submitted. He gets an email of every every state of the process. Um, but, but once he hits submit, that group gets an email saying, hey, you have a new article to look at. And then they don't have to go navigate everywhere for it. That's one thing I love with Salesforce. You don't have to go navigate everywhere. It's just right there. Um, so they get an email with that, um, with either a link or the line items or um, that lecture just right there. So they can take a glimpse at it if they're in their car or if they're at an opera or anywhere, or, you know, if they're gonna say yes, um, or if they're gonna say no, um, if it goes to the next level, those people get notified. Um, you know, Jim gets, you know, he gets notified, you know, and it just goes forward. Um, and we, you can create awesome, tasks in there where, for instance, people are, um, let's say you have a team that you're managing and you want to send, you can send tasks on the fly, you can schedule those tasks. So let's say um, you want everybody to, um, you know, have their timesheets in on Friday. I mean, that could be a workflow that we could create where um, on every Friday an email is sent out saying, hey team, turn in your timesheets. Um, but also, um, those individuals can receive a task, um, maybe Wednesday, stating that, hey, timesheets are due, no exceptions on Friday, due date Friday, and um, those will pop up and in their system, so when they log in, it's one of the first things they'll see in their dashboard, and they will be notified via email as well. So um, it's a great way for a paper trail. So, so you know, you, you've probably had issues with your employees where they've said, oh, I didn't see this, or oh, I missed this email, or whatever. But tasks are great, easily editable. You could edit the fields. You could create different types of tasks. Um, there's just so much you can do with that. Um, you could create different page layouts um, for the different users. Um, so for instance, if the marketing department needed to see certain, certain fields on the account record, but then the um, HR department needed to see different fields, you can create different views for them so they're not bogged down by unnecessary data. They're seeing what they need, when they need, at the time that they need it. And so, you know, tasks are very, very essential, the page layouts, and then um, my next topic that, um, you know, that I'll be discussing is security and, um, and licensing, um, so I'll discuss profiles, record types, um, hierarchies, um, things like that, um, that really monitor uh, the safety of your system. Um, I also get into the nitty gritty of, of, of IP addresses, work times. So for instance, I'm just gonna give you an instance here as I go on and on. Um, Let's say you want individuals only working in the system um, when they are at work. 
So you can utilize that IP address that is in the workplace or if you just want them to work on it at home, you could put that in the system. So if they try to log in anywhere else and they are not able to log in, um, we have we have many ways of making your system secure. I come from a huge cybersecurity background, as I told you, so this is my sweet spot, and um, I just would love to explain more about Salesforce to you, but Salesforce can do everything for you. Um, you know, if you're a doctor, if you're a lawyer, if you manage HR, if you're a salesman, um, if you're a PR company, if you are um, a leader of a group, uh, if you just want to create a site, um, you know, it, it can do anything for anybody. No project is too big or too small for Salesforce. And I have done, I have actually had projects with as little as seven end users to as many as 3,500 plus end users. And so, you know, Salesforce, um, there's pricing structures within it. It's not crazy expensive. There's so much out of the box that can be done that where you don't have to require coding. Sometimes if you want, you know, if you want a, an avant-garde, um, element to your page, um, you'll need some code. Um, but um, a lot of this is just um, simple, no code, drag and drop, easy to use.